Well, thank you all for joining. Good evening. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties here. My name is Eric Osgood, the Emergency Management Director for the Town of Johnson. This week, I took action of ordering all Johnson public parks and public place structures to be closed until further notice. These actions were taken with input provided from the National Parks and Recreational Association guidelines to maintain the safety and health of our community. I do want to be clear though, our green space and publicly owned properties are still open to the public for walking, riding bikes, jogging, or any other activity that can be done as long as you maintain the social distancing and guidelines as suggested by the CDC and Vermont Health Department. I would just also add, for those of you that may have watched the governor's news conference this afternoon or this morning, they are recommending wearing face masks now. Uh, there's gonna be some guidelines that are gonna come down from the CDC on what exactly that is meaning. Uh, and those guidelines are expected within a day or two. They did want to make sure that everyone's clear that do not get a false sense of security. That doesn't mean you can, uh, you know, uh, disobey, not comply with the uh, uh, social distancing. These masks are more as a way of protecting other folks from you because you could be spreading the virus more than they will help protect you from someone else. Uh, switching hats. In my role as the chair of the select board, Johnson Select Board, we're in the exploratory phase of looking at the tools we have to assist taxpayers and businesses after we have got to the other side of this pandemic. There'll be more to come on this in probably a couple of weeks. I would now like to introduce the members of the Johnson Emergency Management Team. I will ask them to each explain their responsibilities and roles. We will then open it up for questions before turning the meeting over to the Johnson Recreational Coordinator for a few words and some local entertainment. So I would ask Gordy Smith to be first. Can you hear me, Eric, okay? Yes, we can, go ahead. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. My role from this Emergency Management Committee command structure is to deal with or coordinate with our fire and EMS I speak weekly with Brad Courier from NEMS, which is also called Northern Medical Emergency Medical Services, and RJ West from the Johnson Fire Department, our chief. The fire department has responded to three alarms since be the beginning of March. NEMS has responded to 40 incidents in Johnson. RJ told me a week ago, firefighters were given the same status as emergency medical responders. He has ordered and received additional personal protective equipment to add to his current inventory. He and Brad are continuously working together on our PPE inventory and SOPs, which is standard operating procedures for responding to EMS calls or fire calls when entry into houses is required. Brad has either called in or zoomed in and is available, and I see Brad, so he will be available for questions afterwards concerning EMS. A point of interest is that Brad is also assistant fire chief in Hyde Park, so he and RJ have a close working relationship. The burn ban that was instituted about a week ago, for clarification, is for brush fires or grass fires. If someone wants a campfire, such as in a small fire pit, fireplace, or an entire rim, that is okay for now without any permit. This needs to be attended during the burn and make sure it is out when leaving it. People need to be able to do some things outside, but must practice the CDC guidelines. Along with the virus, we now have to think of people with allergies for their symptoms, just to confuse the issue. I have a, a couple of friends, I heard of a couple, they were out working outside two days ago doing cleanup, working, and when they came inside, they each had a deer tick on them, so something else we have to think of. Our emergency management team is a diverse group of individuals with each of us with specific strengths. Sometimes we disagree, discuss it, come up with a resolution, and then move on. I don't know about some of you, but when I call from Sterling or in a post office or in the vicinity of other people, I look around to see if anybody's looking at me. I'm learning that a lot of people cough without knowing it, but that doesn't mean they necessarily have the virus. And now I'd like to turn it over to Meredith Dolan for some of her input from the Village Municipal Utilities. Meredith? 
Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Meredith Dolan. Um, as Gordy mentioned, I'm the village manager um, in the um, emergency realm. I'm the backup public information officer. I'm Brian's backup for public information. Um, so if uh, ever he wasn't available to provide information to the public, I could jump in and handle that. Um, on my day-to-day -day duties, um, as Gordy mentioned, relate to the village uh, utilities. So the electric department, the water and sewer department. Um, so if uh, anybody has any questions about those services uh, during this period or any time, um, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm working from home currently, uh, but if you call the office, uh, you can uh, leave a message and I'll call you right back or you can always email me um, and my contact information is on the municipal website. Um, just a quick update on um, the utility bills uh, for the village utilities are coming out um, early next week um, following our normal schedule. Um, in those bills uh, will be the village newsletter. Um, this one's a little bit brief, um, really focused on the current emergency um, with specific utility information and some information about our upcoming meetings. Um, and just as a reminder to folks, uh, we know it's a very difficult financial time for many people, um, but if you are able to pay your utility bills, um, please do so. Uh, that will help ensure that um, our operations can continue uninterrupted without any additional challenges. Um, if you are having trouble paying your bill though, please reach out to us so we can work with you. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Eric. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Meredith and Gordy. Uh, next one be Nat Kinney. Good afternoon. Um, first, my first thought as I'm here, I see there's 60 people in the meeting here. I see a lot of names up on the screen in addition to faces and um, all these people that I recognize are people that are helping in some way. And uh, this is just a real testament to the resilience of our community. And, and it's really just good to be neighbors with all of you. So thank you. Um, oh, and I've got an announcement. The, at the end portion of our uh, meeting here, there'll be an ent entertainment segment as Eric mentioned, and it's going to be uh, Isaac Eddy, who I don't know exactly what he has in store for us, but he is, has asked us to um, write in the chat box um, things that you love about Johnson, things that you love about our town. So um, during the course of the meeting, just write in the chat what you love about our town um, and look forward to that from Isaac. Um, so my role in this team is uh, Twofold, one is to be the liaison with the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department. Um, so far, we've not required, needed to have a lot of contact with them yet, but we do have an open communication line um, between our, our planning team and uh, the Sheriff's Department. Second is uh, coordinating volunteers. Um, just generally speaking, a lot of people have stepped forward to um, wanna help out in a number of ways um it's a little bit tricky managing volunteers because of just how um infectious and contagious this uh, virus is so we've had to really slow down and take our time and be careful about how we employ uh, volunteers or where we send volunteers so there'll be more um on that subject um in the days ahead in the chat i'm going to post some links to places where you can go to sign up to volunteer. And um, anyone needing services as well can um, either, my email's there, but also the first first stop for people who needing volunteers, needing services should be 211. Um, and that's, that's what I got, thank you. Thank you, Nat. Uh, next one, Brian Story. Hi, thank you. Uh, so for the emergency management team, my chief responsibility is serving as the public information officer. So I'm putting together the uh, our web page, um, helping out with our Facebook and uh, front porch forum posts, and uh, coordinating with our village, or excuse me, our town services like uh, you know Lisa's work and our road. I think okay, thank you, Brian. And uh, last but certainly not least, Scott Myers. Hey, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well and you can actually hear me. Uh, I am the planning group within ICS and 
that basically is uh, developing and moving action items, which we'll look at shortly uh, forward. Um, most of those items we started out doing were proactive, uh, where we were trying to get ahead of the curve a little bit. We've been sort of looking at a reactive stance at this point, just because of the amount of information that's coming out. Uh, one of the things I try to do is make sure there's a tr smooth trans, uh, transfer of work within ICS and then getting a unified message out before going live um, with a release. And that's extremely important to make sure that we're all on the same page before uh, Eric makes his recommendations and notices to the rest of the community. Um, one of the things that's keeping us busy right now with the planning phase is, as you well know, CDC and the Vermont Department of Health and executive orders, they come almost daily at this point. So this is where the planning phase is more or less going into a, a reactive mode, um, trying to keep up to make sure our town is following all those recommendations and guidelines. Um, and I'm also providing technical assistance to Eric and some of the other members of the team. Um, and I would just like to shout out to everybody um, who's been involved in this process. The work has been quick, uh, a little stressful at times, absolutely amazing. Um, and I hope we'll be able to get through this in one piece. Okay. Um... Scott, do you, are you able to walk down through that incident tracker real quickly, just so people have a, a, a good feel for what we've been looking at? Sure, I think I can do that. And with that, um, we started out with probably uh, about 20 items. Uh, and you can see we're starting to fill the sheet fairly quickly. Um, obviously, when we went into this, we were worried because we had such a wide uh, net cast for so many different populations in our community and that us that sort of revolved around the Northern Vermont University and the Vermont Studio Center. So they were the first ones that we put on our list. Um, getting an idea of what their population was, what their concerns were, were they going to be able to stay open? And as we know today, they are both closed. Um, and we have in column four, people who have been assigned to some of these tasks, sort of running through them. Um, I'm not gonna get into the thick because we would be here for a full hour and I don't wanna do that. But if there's something that uh, you want questions on, feel free to speak up when I get through them real quick. So uh, fire department, EMS, for obvious reasons, the veterans uh, nursing home slash veterans up on 100 seat convenience stores, Sterling Market food security, Johnson Farm and Garden because it's our local hardware store and we rely on those folks, especially for the town and the village employees. Public outreach and social media, um, how we're basically getting the word out to our community members what the town and village is up to. Uh, postponing town and village groups. This has been a little difficult because we have rules that we have to follow for open meeting laws that has been addressed finally. Uh, food security, making sure we have good healthy food still coming into the community. Web access for students. And this is a lot of people who have been working with this. Um, from our library to the elementary school to four members of our team. Vulnerable populations, who they are, how we can help them out, uh, social services and churches, rescheduling town staff and rescheduling village staff. You've probably heard uh, Gordy talk about this for the village side and Meredith as well, and Eric and Brian talk about town staff and how we've reduced staff so we're not violating the uh, CDC six foot guidelines. Uh, the Laraway contact, Memorial Housing, Community Mental Health, uh, Johnson Works, and Kyle is a big part of that. The water and sewer plant, uh, Meredith is our key person on that. And so far things are going well. 
call out procedures for town employees and call out procedures for village employees. This is basically when we have an outage and we have a crew of uh, line people get together to work on the lines. We're trying to track how often they need to break that six foot distancing, the social distancing. And there's just some things that happen where they have to be in close contact. And we're trying to track that the best we can and maybe modify uh, our procedures in the same breath. Volunteers and nonprofits, uh, Nat has been doing amazing work on that. Um, there's a lot of organizations and we're trying to stick with organizations to spearhead the volunteers' efforts in our community. Uh, volunteer safety, and this dovetails right in with that. We really want to make sure that volunteers who are reaching out to people who need help are not going to be exposed to COVID-19. We want to make sure the people that they're helping are not exposed to COVID-19. So it's a, a bit of risk assessment for both parties. Flood risk and response uh, assessments, that's an Eric and Gordy one. Um, we're still watching that very closely. Uh, again, dovetailing into that is identifying shelters. We sort of were thinking about this, and this is work from Gordy and Eric, doing the, the big picture of what happens if we have a fire and we need some place to shelter uh, community members. And Johnson Elementary School at this point has stepped up um, and NVU is possibly a secondary uh, place and we are looking for a tertiary uh, building as well. Shelter in place orders, this is gonna be constantly changing. You've probably heard the governor re redo the executive order. I think he's on number eight. I might be a little wrong on that. Seven or eight, I think eight's coming around the corner. Um, on what exactly that means for sheltering in place. And today I actually heard 10 miles if you need to drive somewhere. Otherwise, you know, stay on your property, go for a walk, get outside, but uh, don't, don't crowd up with a bunch of other folks. Update on the open meeting law. I think that one's finally done. Um, so on Monday, we'll put that as monitoring. The skate park, uh, really unfortunate, but as Eric said, we're taking guidelines from some of the other organizations that deal with parks, and this is not unique to Vermont. Uh, we have family out in Colorado who are going through the same thing as we speak, with their parks being closed down. The food shelf, again, food security, same issues. We worry about the folks who work at the food shelf for getting exposed to COVID-19, and we also worry about people picking up food. So we have a policy put in place that follows CDC guidelines and a few other guidelines to make sure that that risk is uh, mitigated. Community uh, conductivity, um, this is a big one, has been for a long time in Johnson. We're doing the best we can with what we have and the solid waste transfer station, we've been reduced down to Johnson and Stowe. Stowe. So we might have more traffic up on that side of town, um, getting rid of their solid waste and recycling. So if anybody has questions on any of the detail, I'd be glad to jump into it real quick. Hey, Scott, just a real quick question, uh, yeah. remark on the solid waste trans on the transfer station. Um, they're now open Sundays through this, um, so people know they're open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the time being. Okay. Thanks for that. Okay. Thank, thank you, Scott. Yeah. So I just want everyone to know that there's a, a really uh, awesome team here working, uh, and we're all working together like Gordy indicated. Uh, it's been a, a great honor to work with all these folks uh, and there's they're available as well as myself and there are other experts on the line that represent different organizations 
So I would at this time open it up for anyone who's got any questions or concerns or issues they'd like to bring forward. You might want to either use the chat room to call people who have questions or use the reactions. This is Dorothy Below Rising on the phone. Yes, um, I, I've been following the health department um, information. There's a, they post a map of cases and it's hard to tell on that map how many cases there really are in LaBoyle County. So there are apparently cases in LaBoyle County. Do we have any idea how um, how widespread it might be in the county now and in Johnson? As far as Johnson, Dorothy, no, I do not know that level of details. If you go to the Johnson website, COVID-19, there is a link to the Vermont Health Department's website, and there is a way to see by county how many uh, positives there are. I believe t as of today, it's 17 in Lamoille County. 17, okay. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Someone else? Uh, we've got Walter. Okay, go ahead, Walter. Hello, uh, everybody. Um, you mentioned earlier, Eric, about um, economic development. Um, I just want to tell people there is a lot of free money out there right now for small businesses. And when I say small businesses, this can be the side gigs, uh, the yoga instructor, the snow plow operator, etc. And people can be applying for this money now. Uh, there is a grant program that you can literally get up to $10,000. Self-employed people, you can file for unemployment insurance um, for people who are trying to keep people employed. The employee retention credit for your payroll taxes, you can get money back now, up to 50% of your payroll. Um, in terms of the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, you can apply for a loan starting today. This is, again, another tax-free grant. So when you talk about businesses, and these can be really small self-employed people. Um, all by themselves. So really people need to be taking advantage of these things before we lose all our businesses on, down, on downtown. So if anybody does have questions, I will help them. Uh, that's literally all I've done this week with my clients is help my clients get this money. And I just wanna put that out there to people. There is a lot of free money out there for small businesses. And this can be just this little side gig that you have that you can get some money for too. So I just want to put that out there, people. You need to start acting because these programs are going to get really busy, really crowded, and they're going to take a while. Yeah, thank you, Walter. I would echo that. We're just starting now to see some of the details of how people can get this kind of help. Anyone else? Yes. yes. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Perry up yes. here on the Moyle View. Um, I wanted to comment on the number of cases in Lamoille County. 17 does not sound like a big number. Um, the problem is that we don't test everyone. There are people who have virus and may not yet show symptoms. There are people who have virus and may not ever show symptoms. Please look at our case per 100,000 people. Lamoille County is not very um, largely populated. So our case per 100,000 is upwards of 60 cases per 100,000. So that's high when you look at our overall population. I think we need to continue what we are doing pay attention to the physical distancing. I agree that we all should be wearing a face covering, a cloth mask when out in public. This is pro to protect others and hopefully protect ourselves. I am willing to make a mask for anyone who wants it. Um, I've been working away at that. So feel free to contact me. I'll put my contact in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. This is Dorothy again. Um, to add to that, the CDC suggests that there is one 
Um, there are 16 positive cases in the community for every one known case. And that would make seven, uh, 272 cases in Lamoille County if that was true. So uh, to echo what was just said, um, th there are people walking around that don't even know they have it and don't mean to cause any spread in the virus at all. But we all need to be aware that this virus is incredibly virulent. And um, I, I posted on my Facebook page today something that came from a website called Medscape. It's a site that many medical people use. And there's a 12-slide slideshow on there for anybody that wants to look for it. And it talks about... Um, where this virus will stay on surfaces on paper for up to four days, which caused me to think about how I handle my mail. Um, it, they found it in the one of the cruise ships where after a room had been empty for 17 days, they were still able to find virus on surfaces in those rooms. So hand washing, keeping your hands away from your face, being extremely cautious about everything you touch, everything you handle. Um, I made bleach wipes. We could not find Clorox wipes anywhere. I took a package of baby wipes and mixed a one to nine part solution of bleach and poured it into the baby wipes so that I have my own Clorox wipes and I carry them with me everywhere. I I wipe every door handle in the building. I'm now living in a public building, and um, we we can't be too cautious about this virus. That's enough for me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dorothy. Um, it sounds like a reputable uh, organization you're referring to. I would just caution everyone: there are some scams out there. The the attorney general has is warned of that, that have already popped up. The, as far as the town, we are taking all of our direction from the CDC and the Vermont Health Department. But just be aware there are some out there that may not be exactly accurate. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, me again, Elizabeth Perry. I'm sorry to uh, pipe in again. Um, virus detected on a surface is much different than the infectious property of that virus. While the virus may be detected um, on steel up to three days later on paper, yes, it may be detected, but how virulent is that virus? Let's not drum up unwanted fear. Let's be smart. Let's follow guidelines. Physical distancing, yes, masks when in public to protect others, and hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. The nurse has spoken. Thank you. And thank you again. And I, I would once again just reiterate, we're taking our uh, direction from the CDC and Vermont Health Department. Uh, anyone else? Hi. Hey, uh, uh, Charles, go ahead. I uh, just wanted to say there's uh, one substance people really aren't pushing that they can use, and that's deep alcohol. 90% alcohol, the other 10% you don't really want on your skin, but that means that you know people really aren't grabbing it. It's still around in the hardware stores. You can spray it on door handles. You can spray it on boxes. It kills, uh, uh, kills COVID-19 in about a minute. I Back to that mask issue, uh, I mean, it's nice that people are volunteering to make them, but uh, I mean, everybody in the entire country is going to be after them. I was wondering if there's any uh, uh, any kind of initiative that could be gotten going locally in regards to that particular issue. And I'll just say that uh, the state is looking at that as well. In their conf uh, uh, news conference, the governor had they are still waiting for the CDC guidelines on exactly what the mask should be and what the protocol should be. And once those come, the state will take the lead on it. And then uh, there could be some opportunities for other folks to make masks, but that has not come out yet. Go ahead. Uh, from the Department of Health. 
We're having a hard time hearing me. I'm sorry. There, we can hear you now. Okay, I'll keep the phone posting. Um, so I just wanted to say that on the, the, the Vermont Department of Health website, they have changed their message about wearing masks. Um, and it says here that you know, please wear masks or cloth masks or covering when you are when you leave your home for an essential purpose. Um, and you can read more of that. It's under um, the COVID section, and it's under um, how to, um, how can I protect myself? Um, and I just want to to emphasize that I think um, there are some less, um, um, patterns out there for making masks and that's that's all great and I think um, my mother for one is making those um, and I do want to say that I've heard it before and I've actually observed it today when uh, I was in the grocery store and someone had a kerchief over their face they kept touching their face to adjust, adjust the kerchief so keep that in mind that um, just because you have a mask on still you know you don't want to be touching your face keep Keep those very um, those constant practices of washing your hands, not touching your face, um, just being um, all of those things. That's it. That's all for now. Okay, thank you, Valerie. It was very difficult to hear you, but I think we got most of it. Uh, the wearing the cloth mask. There's a COVID section of the health department's website that you can find this information on and protecting yourself and if, I think everyone heard most of it I think I did but thank you anyone else yeah just a, a heads up to when we're using our um, Clorox products especially when we're trying to make our own concoctions just remember that Clorox is really incompatible with so many different chemicals. Some cleaning chemicals will react with Clorox pretty violently. It'll kick off a, a free radical of chlorine, which could make you extremely ill, if not burn you. So before you start adding Clorox to other cleaning products, please make sure you're not creating something chemically that's gonna be worse than the virus. Thanks. If I'm not hearing anyone, I would turn it over to Lisa. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining in for this part. And now please stay for Lisa Cruz, a recreational coordinator and some words that she's got with programs that are gonna be coming out or are already out. Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you, Eric. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for hanging in there through this meeting and please stay till the end. We're going to have some entertainment. Um, we at Johnson Recreation are trying to think of things that we can do at home um, when we're all sheltering in place. Unfortunately, we've seen the parks close and just prior to this meeting, we saw that the Long Trail and the Catamount Hut System and all these places are also starting to shut down. Um, so we've made some updates to our website. It's johnsonrecreationbt.com, and there is a tab on their community activities. So some of the closings and things like that are on there, but we also have some positive initiatives we've come up with. We're doing a teddy bear hunt. So people in town have been putting teddy bears in their trees and their windows, really getting creative with it. And so when we're out on our walks, we can be looking for teddy bears. And if you haven't yet put one in your window, please do. Um, I know my family is really enjoying it. And the feedback we're getting through our Zoom meetings from the JS students is that they are also really enjoying it. Um, we're doing hearts for healthcare workers. This is a national initiative to put hearts in your front windows or on your front door with signs of thanks and such. Um, Johnson Recreation would also like to come up with a thank you for our essential workers, um, something similar, but the heart is being used. So if you can think of something fun, please um, let me know about that. And we have a virtual walking team that anyone in the community can join with a goal of getting to a certain number of steps. And next week is going to be um, National Public Health Week. And so we will have on Sunday, we'll be launching a new challenge for the week of April 6th through 12th. 
Um, so check out johnsonrecreationvt.com and then there's a community activities link that you can go and sign up for um, different things that we're doing and it'll give you information on stuff that we are um, working on and new stuff every day. All right, so for our entertainment this evening, we have um, our very own Isaac Eddy. He is a theater professor at um, Northern Vermont University. And he is going to do some songs. He said a few songs to hopefully lift our spirits. Hello, Isaac. Hello, thank you. Okay. Is, uh, how, do, how do I sound? Does it sound okay? Okay, great. First, I want to say uh, thank you so much to Lisa and thank you so much to all the committee leaders and members. Um, this is really a tough time for everybody and it's truly inspiring to see how you all are coming together and, and leading our town through this difficult thing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It means a lot and such vital information was shared in this forum that um, is so important for our health and safety, but also important for our souls. Uh, we are a beautiful town and we are strong and we will get through this and it's in large part thanks to you all. And um, I'm just so happy to be able to, to sing a couple songs. Uh, it's gonna be very short. I have um, my kid Hero here to, to sing with me too. And uh, the first thing I want to do is just very briefly sing the chorus to Lean On Me. Bill Withers uh, just recently passed away and he is incredible. Um, so if you all want to keep on mute, but please, please sing along with me. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on in full. It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. And that is more important now than ever before. Okay, so for, uh, after that, I would love to sing a song by Modest Yahoo. And this is called One Day. Uh, please, if you don't know the song, I highly recommend you to check it out on YouTube and play it um, on repeat. It is a very uh, important, uplifting song um, for everything that we're dealing with right now. Sometimes I lay under the moon. I thank God I'm breathing. I has to not take me too soon, because I am here for a reason. Uh, we, we, uh, we did it the wrong. I started in the wrong way some sometimes i lay under the moon i thank god i'm breathing okay here we go ready sometimes in my tears i drown but i never let it get me down because when negativity surrounds i know one day it'll all turn around because all my life i've been waiting for i've been praying for for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war and our children will play. One day, one day, one day, yeah. Oh, oh, one day, one day, one day, yeah. It's not about win or lose. Cause we all lose when we feed on the souls of the innocent Blood stained pavement, bodies keep moving but the water stay raging In this maze you can lose your way, your way But don't let it phase you, don't drive you crazy, no way, no way Sometimes in my tears I drown But I never let it get me down and when negativity surrounds, I know one day it'll all come around because all my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war and our children will play one day, one day, one day, yeah. Oh, one day, one day, one day, yeah. All right, 
right. And so for the uh, last song tonight, um, I wrote a very, very simple um, chorus for our town. And um, I'm going to fill the verses improvised with uh, the list of all the amazing things that you all put in the chat of things that we love about our town because there are so many things. They could never even fill just one song, but I'm going to try. And I'm a terrible freestyler, so do not expect that this is going to rhyme, but it will still be wonderful. Here is the chorus, and then I'll get into all the things that you all listed. Thanks to my friends of Johnson, we are never alone. Thanks to my friends of Johnson. I'm proud to call you my home. We got the Sterling, Sterling Market, and the dirt roads for running and biking. Of course, there's TNL and the Historical Society, ladies, and their pie. Thanks to the friends of Johnson, we are never alone. I love my friends of Johnson. I'm proud to call you my home. There's programs offered by the that fabulous wreck committee. I love the people and the little shop. And I love those little shop owners like the studio art store and Ebenezer Books and Downtown Pizza and all of the other amazing things on Main Street. I love my friends of Johnson. We are never alone. I love my friends of Johnson. I'm proud to call you my home. There's the community, the community oven. You know you love it. And there's the library, and there's pie. Everybody says pie because that's one of the greatest things about our town. And there's the watching birds from my pond. And I just love hanging at home because we got some of the most beautiful views in this town, and you know it. Oh, I love my friends of Johnson. We are never alone. Thanks to my friends. Of Johnson, I'm proud to call you my home. Of course, there's Mill Park and Ebenezer Books, and there's that beautiful cover bridge that's on the way to the elementary school that I almost always drive here or late to, but I still love it. And there's also downtown pizza, and there's also the Vermont stir. Is that the uh, the old school Ben and Jerry's thing that's just like the giant tub of all the pizza? I hope it is because that's what I ate in the 90s. And if it's still around, that's awesome because we are the friends of Johnson. And we are never, 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 never alone. Thanks to my friends of Johnson. I'm proud, so proud to call you my home. Of course, there's Johnson Farm and Garden, where I go every week. And there's potty hole, potholes and spotty internet and service and positive attitudes. And then there's the people. And there's Ebenezer Books again. You know you gotta love it, your local bookstore. And of course, there is the Hi, thanks to my friends. There's one more verse after this, I promise. Of Johnson, we are never alone. My friends of 
Johnson. I'm proud to call you my home. There's the Guion, that beautiful Guion River. And there's NVU, that's my meal ticket, but there's more things that's important than that. It's also a very important community thing. And then there's Journey's End, beautiful Journey's End. And there's the rail trail. And there's hockey, so much beautiful hockey, thanks to Brian and Jasmine building that skating rink that offered so many beautiful things. And the last thing I'm gonna say before I do one last chorus is hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. Whoa, just wash your hands and stay calm and be smart. Wash your hands. The nurse has spoken. Thanks to my friends. Oh, up Johnson. We are never alone. Thanks to my friends. Up Johnson. I'm proud, so proud to call you my Oh, we love you, Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. And thank you, everyone, for joining. I see we have at least one of the representatives online. Is there anything you'd like to say before we end? Um, if anyone needs anything, I'm always available. Um, all my contact information is on the uh, Johnson page. So thank you. Okay, thank you all. See you next week.